So um, another subject that uh, you and I sort of have a shared fascination for um, is temporary work and sort of the, the universe of side gigs. You know, for as much as I love uh, the independence of being able to, you know, have my own schedule, um, I think the tricky thing of, of working a lot of these side gigs, uh, especially when you do it for so long, is you start to develop a perpetual anxiety of joblessness. Yeah. And you're always thinking about this, you know, like, what am I going to do next? What's going to happen after that? How long is this going to last? Like, uh, what's it been like for you? You know, what kind of, what kinds of side jobs have you had and how has this process been like for you? Yeah, it, it was, well, it's very common in television because most people, uh, like n- most people who work in animation aren't salaried. They're just contract from show to show. So if you're working on like season two of BoJack, you know, you're good for like, let's say like 11 months. And then it's like, where's the next one? I don't know if BoJack did 11 months. I just pulled it up. But mm-hmm. like, uh, so, uh, so there's just, there's a lot, like, even when you just have your full-time job, there's a lot of just, when's my next gig? Am I going to have money? Can I plan ahead? Um, and I've done a, I've done a lot of side gigs. I, uh, I do a lot of babysitting and pet sitting gigs. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you guys have Rover? Rover, what is that? It's a dog walking app for iPhones and people. Oh. Do, it's like Uber, but for dog walkers. It's okay. very weird. But I, I've walked a lot of dogs. Um, uh, I've done face painting parties, which is really fun because I'm not a visual artist. Like, uh-huh. I don't have those skills, but I can get a kid to sit still. So like someone who's a visual artist and my face paint will be on par because like they can do really talented things, but my kid's sitting still. So I oh, do a lot cool. of face painting. So you've, yeah. you've, it seems like you've done like a huge range um, of different work. Um, are there some that are better than others? Uh, anything that's cash. Cause then um, you don't get, you don't have to worry about taxes and stuff. Yeah. But, uh, especially because uh right now um i don't think i mentioned this to you but my partner doesn't have status in the country mm-hmm. so like a lot of our money has to be under the table until he gets uh his permanent residency mm-hmm. I, like a green card um and so like yeah any of those um any of those i'll do i'll take up a lot of editing jobs like a lot of like just copy editing and proofreading uh-huh, uh-huh. um for a while, I was a mall elf. Not this Christmas season, but uh, other Christmas seasons past. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, it's... I mean, thankfully, it seems like you have so many different talents that you're able to go from, you know, something as as different as dog walking all the way to babysitting and copy editing. Um, but it, it, I think part of the anxiety, especially here in America... Um, with our terrible healthcare is, you know, uh, a lot of us are, are, you know, can't even afford to, uh, you know, afford for the basic services of just getting a checkup. Um, And, you know, it seems like we're both sort of in the same boat of like, you know, how, how expensive is rent? And, you know, the fact that most people just cannot afford, I mean, like when you're talking about a, a rental price of like 2700 it's like who like you're setting a price like that you're really making a point about who you think should live there yeah because there's only certain people who are going to be able to you know afford something like that comfortably and unfortunately this you know this pushes out a lot of people not even just if, if, we're, if we're talking about race and we're talking about people of color who are being excluded from a lot of these neighborhoods but you're also talking about excluding a lot of different professions and a lot of people of different industries um and you know i i I think it's so um it's interesting how even if if we're talking about entertainment and 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 you know people who are actors or people who are in production um you know there's always this misconception that you you work on a big project you're, you're working on a big name like oh my gosh like you're working on this show they think that you're rich but a lot of these jobs like you were saying like they're for a certain period of time and then yeah. within that space like if you're working on a project for 11 months 
you know, the next five months, you have to worry about where you're going to, you know, be able to supplement your income from. So it's like side jobs are, it's great that we have so much access to quote quick money and, and, and some of these jobs, but it's so unfortunate that a lot of people are starting to feel like they can't find a stable job at all. And now side gigs are the only thing that they can do. Yeah. Yeah. And like, uh, we do have obvious, not obviously, but we have better healthcare than you, but, uh, um shout out to canada i guess but uh <laughs> it is one of those things like so my current gig it's good to go for a, like a good while mm-hmm. and uh everybody likes to talk about how canada's healthcare. well everybody here likes to talk about how our healthcare is so good but i think it's because we're comparing it to you guys <laughs> like the yeah. bar can't that's like a constant problem of canada is uh-huh. like we are always comparing ourselves to you uh-huh. then we always like pat ourselves on the back for like not good shit like uh... like at least we're not as racist as the u.s and it's like actually we are and why is that your bar and like our healthcare is better than the u.s but uh i have work benefits so mm-hmm. like because of work benefits i can uh i can afford like my asthma medicine and i can afford like we still have um dispensary fees and not yeah. everything is covered so mm-hmm. It's like still like a constant stress. And then like, like I said, with my partner, like he doesn't have healthcare right now because he's not, he doesn't have status. Mm-hmm. So it's like, this, he hit his head the other day, like just like a bump on his head. And he got like, he, the anxiety kicked in because it was like, what do I do if it's a concussion? What do I do if it's mm-hmm. so, like that? It, it, uh, it like freezes you as I freeze on the spot, like that kind of like stress and anxiety. But, um, and then, yeah, with this with this podcast and, like, some of my other, like, side projects, it's one of those things where, like, uh, you feel like you should – I don't know. I feel like I always have to put it – like, it's always going to be last on the priority list mm-hmm, because mm-hmm. it's something I do that's, like, art for fun. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. really make money. Uh-huh. And uh, we're always – I don't know, like – I don't know about you, but, like, when you get home after, like, work or after doing, like, a, a side gig, like, I'll look around and be like, okay, so what's the next, what's the next thing I can do to, like, bring in some cash flow rather than, like, sit and enjoy anything? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And, like, that's what I was sort of talking about, this perpetual anxiety of, like, sometimes you just, you feel like you can't relax and you feel guilty even for taking time for yourself because you keep thinking to yourself like well you know this bill's due like why am i like how can i deserve to sit down and watch this show when i could be working on this and when i could be working on that and like it's it's put me in this weird situation where on one hand like i have this i guess you can say dream of or whatever of like having a podcast and and you know churning out content and it being successful and and whatnot uh, but on the other hand, I'm I'm thinking to myself, like, is that also just another one of these parts of myself that's saying, hey, I need to work on this so I can have another possible steady flow of income or like yeah. something that that could be a refuge from, you know, from the nine to five. And so, like, it's it just this feeling of like, I have to work. I have to be working. Why not? How come I'm not working? And like, and sometimes I, I, I find it hard to relax and just hard to finish shows or finish anything because I'm just like, that's constantly on my mind. And even though I have a more stable job right now, like I don't know if it's just the residue of being in that situation for so long, or that's just the byproduct, maybe, you know, working in social media and having these different platforms. Like you're just constantly worrying about this. (laughs) 